Now, for our next trick, we would like to have multiple balls bouncing around this box. So what we would like to do is add a new have the keystroke n add a new ball. Now that's not going to be possible in our current architecture because Remember what we said about container, right? Container, when you have a container, it, it can't change. It can't change the objects it has. So we're going to have to do something funny, OK? And what we're going to do to get around that is we're going to make the container stateful as well, OK? And then we'll add a ball factory to our container. But first of all, let's just worry about making the container stateful. Okay. So here's void. Right. Right. <coughs> right. I program with cons a lot, which means that whenever I add new stuff, I add it at the top of the file, not at the beginning. Right. So I cons um, new information at the top of my file. So, so the comments here go in reverse chronological order. OK? So we're going to make the container stateful. So there are our objects. There are excuse me, our interfaces again, stateful world obj and world obj. OK? And here is our container. But now observe that container is a used to be a world obj, and now we are going to make it a stateful world obj. Okay, so what are we going to do? Instead of building a new container in which the objects are the result of mapping the ob on tick across the objects, and the stateful objects are the result of doing um, sending an on tick each of the stateful objects, we are going to set bang the objects field to be the right set of objects, the right list of objects. And we don't even have to worry about stateful objects because the stateful objects field, well, it never changed in, in the first place. Okay, but we do have to make sure that we send the on tick message to each of the stateful objects, so each of the stateful objects um, updates themselves. And similarly for on mouse, and similarly for on key. Okay. And add to see doesn't change. Okay, so now container is itself going to be stateful. Uh, let's see, what else do we have to do here? I think that's actually it. Let's scroll down and see. Yeah, nothing changes there, nothing changes there, uh, nothing changes there. Um, yeah, all I, was make, all I did was make the container stateful. Okay, let's just make sure that continued to work. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here is one world uh, V1. Okay, so here is the run world, which is exactly the same as we had before. Ah! Oh, let's see. Expected. It's it expected. Oh, sorry. It expected a uh, argument. What 
what was the name of it? It was Init World. Okay. Send. Target is not an object. Target void. Method name on tick. What happened here? On tick. We changed the contract for on tick. Container on tick. It returns void. So it returns something else. Here it actually happened to return hash void. Okay. But in any case, it doesn't return another container. So next time we go to send an on tick to the to the world, it's going to be trying to send on tick to hash void, whatever that is. Okay. So we changed the contract in one place, but we didn't change our code down here in runworld.v1 to match. This is why we have contracts. The contract documents what on what send w on tick is supposed to do. And we changed it in one place, but Right, we changed the contract, but here is some code that relied on the old contract. So we can fix that easily enough. Okay, we'll change our call to Big Bang so that in every time we have to send a message to the world. We send the message. The world updates itself. And then we make sure that we return the world again. And of course, this will be the world with its new fields. Now you can see that it hasn't died yet, which is a good, always a good sign. Okay, so we have made the container stateful. This give, at least gives us the possibility of adding new balls to our system.